Martin Lehan, it's beautiful to see this morning out here in Mount Juliet. The greens are looking fabulous. You've been up bright and early, half six I believe, getting them ready. Yeah, we start here about half six in the morning, get the course prepared and set up for, for our golfers for the day, which basically means starting with a setup of greens, tees, fairways, our cups, which you can see in the background being changed at the moment there. And yeah, everything just progresses on from there then. Set out, out to small jobs for bunkers and rough areas and yeah it's quite extensive it's quite extensive now a lot of work in it so you start at half six you're going till about 10 o'clock every morning do the grass does the grass have to be cut every day every single day the greens are cut greens are cut every day okay. every day tees fairways twice three times a week we cut them depending on the weather it just totally depends on the weather and how long would it take to prepare a place for a potential Irish Open, a golf course of this magnitude? You're looking at maybe 12 months preparation, setting up between everything, getting all little bits and pieces done, and bunkers topped up with sand, edged. It's quite extensive. There's a lot of work that goes into the background of it that people don't realise. You know, so there's, there's, there's quite a bit of work in it. And how many people are on your team? We have about 10 full-time staff here on the golf course which we look after the gardens and the hotel as well. So we have a big area from basically from the main gate in. Now, Martin, where we're standing here right now, uh, the driving range, this is all completely new. This is all brand new, yes. From all the first the, Irish Open? From, yeah, from the first Irish Open, yeah. Everything here has been changed. As you can see, it's, it's a complete new driving range. Okay, so who designed this one? It was Paul McGinley designed okay. this. What's different about it? Originally, we had a tea boxes down, which was down the far end, which are now gone. The fairway is now split into two, which goes both sides of the island. So we now basically have two two fairways down there, which which just run off into the distance. So how many acres does this course cover? The course is covering a little over 300 acres. Roughly, right. the so if you're playing 18 holes of golf in a day, how many kilometres do you cover? Quite a few. <laughs> yeah. Quite a few kilometres. It's a very vast course. It's very open. And it's a long distance from a, a tee box to the next, or say from the green to the next tee box. Okay. It's, it's, it's spread out, it's spread out over a vast distance, this course. Okay, so, so no wonder why it takes you nearly four hours every morning to cut it, a team well, of ten it, men. It takes us, yeah, about, about four and a half hours to cut all the greens in the morning. It would take us all day to cut the fairways. A duty-free Irish Open, what are you expecting your workload to be like? Hectic. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll start probably about quarter past four in the morning and then we basically finish just before the golfers go out and then we come back in about four or five o'clock in the evening and we work right through that to dark. Um, so it's and like what do you do it's a beautiful day here at the moment what if that week is raining how does it affect the course depending on how much rain we get yeah it, it, it has because if we get a lot of rain you'll end up with bunkers that are going to start holding water on you and Hopefully greens shouldn't hold water. Our greens generally don't ever have any water on the greens. But yeah, it, it, it just makes things very awkward. It just makes things very awkward now to have. Depending on the like, rain that you're getting nowadays, it's not, it's not like what you would get years ago. Okay, it's not going to water log the course. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Be, but yeah, as I said, you're always going to get downpours of rain. It just makes things very awkward. Okay. Now, Jack Nicholas originally designed this course what involvement would he have had in it, do you know? In the original design? Yeah. yeah Jack designed the course. And yeah, well, like, that was it. He just basically designed this place and got it built. And that's more of his thing. It's his signature is on it. Like, it's, it's, the course has been done and maintained and kept to the Jack Nicklaus signature. Like, the course hasn't itself hasn't been altered in any way. It's, it's, it's still a Jack Nicklaus signature course. Do you, do you play golf yourself? No. <laughs> but tell me you cut the grass at home. <laughs> yeah, I cut my own grass, yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling about your grounds being walked on by so many people, so many golfers? It's just something you live with, you know what I mean? Like, it's a good time of the year to have it, so you're going to have a good recovery after it. So, like, it's not as if it was late, like, when we had the American Expresses. We were in September. You were coming into the winter months, so it, it took a long time to get stuff to recover areas that would have been trampled down and walked took quite a while to recover because you're at the wrong end of the year whereas with the Irish Open we have basically potentially the whole summer left for the course to recover again after it. Obviously the pandemic has helped it as well. 
to have yeah, that rest. It has, yeah, it's, it's given us, yeah, it's given the course a great break. Having the pandemic mean we had no golfers there for so long, it's given it a great chance, like, for everything to mature and recover and just basically, yeah, to have fun. Did you ever think you'd miss the sound of that, somebody teeing off when the place was closed during the pandemic? Well, it was great for us because we were able to get stuff done and jobs done that we couldn't get done with golfers, but now like when it was closed, we set the jobs we could do and do at our own pace. Like. Okay. What were the projects? What were they? Like, one of the biggest things we used to have here was cutting first thing in the morning. You're always going to get grass clippings, which makes it look more sightly. Whereas in the town, when the grass is dry, everything just disperses and disappears and you don't see any of that, that clippings left on the ground. So it likes the fairways and greens, we could mow them whenever we wanted. Like we could start mowing fairways at 10 o'clock. Okay. Instead of having to do much. You didn't have to start as early as what no, you're saying. No, no. <laughs> and why don't you play golf? I see enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I worked at that golf shop. I get you. <laughs> um, Martin, tell me a bit about yourself. You're a local man from Thomastown. Yeah, I live the far side of Thomastown and not too far from here. So, yeah, when I started here back in 92, May of 92. Months. And do you think you'll sleep that week at all? <laughs> ah, look, we've been there, we've done it, I've done it all before. So yeah. I've been through all the Irish Opens and American Expresses and seniors and stuff. So, like, it's nothing new. Well, tell us a, it's not new to us. a memory so, that stands out since you've been new. to all the you've been to all the Irish Opens I've here. I've been here, like, for the three Irish Opens that we had back in '93, four, or five. I was here for them because I started in '92. So, yeah. Different, different scenery then back then, crowds were different. Like with the American Expresses, it was just phenomenal here. The, the, the crowds here, you just couldn't move. You just could not move here with the crowds. Even for us trying to do anything for the American Express, it was just, just, you just couldn't do anything. It was just so hard to get around to do the jobs. <laughs> is it fun to be at all these opens? Yeah, it is, you know what I mean? It, 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 it changed the whole scenery of the thing. Like mm -hmm. it just puts some new variety into it. And do you, you know, celebrate just, when it's all over? We might have a drink or two. Okay. But then we're very busy the week after, like we're full, basically. So it's very hard. I know it's grand, let's say, yeah, your Irish Open is over now. Everyone go and have a few drinks or whatever. But we're back full about the next morning, like, right, Monday you, morning. Yeah, because your members so, are all ready to go it, after yeah. watching it all yeah. week. <laughs> and that's it. And we're, Monday is nearly busier than the Sunday for us. Go because away. we have all our members and whoever else sponsors and stuff like they're all out playing on the Monday yeah. and they play the same course as what was played on the Sunday. So and what's the difference between the course that will be played for the potential duty-free Irish Open as opposed to what your regular member would play? The biggest thing that would be in it is green speeds. We will up the green speeds for the competition. Where your average golfers, it's just play would take too long with the same speeds around the greens. It's just just takes too long for them to go around so we will the biggest thing that you will see for that is the green speeds will be all up for, for the tournament now break that down for me i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> it's basically the roll of the ball okay it's how fast the roll the ball can roll across the green and the distance it can go when it's heat so you'll cut so we basically have like a system meters a device that we measure uh -huh. which can measure the speed of the ball and how fast it goes across across the green. That's incredible. So it, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's What's that ball there in your hand? That looks like a pretty special one there. Show that one, to the camera. That's one I just picked up on the range. It's a nice gold was, one. It's yeah. a good sign. So we're in for a good month, Martin. That can tell you. All about <laughs> it's tell you to that's take up players. golf. That's our players. <laughs> you open up here, please, God. You know, next year we'll have the tourists in abundant um, coming to Mount Juliet and Thomastown. Um, what would you tell them to do? What would you recommend them to do in the local area? Play golf. <laughs> Simple as that. Play golf. <laughs> yeah, we are getting we're getting very busy now again. Yeah. Like we're we're pretty much full now again, golf wise. So it's 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 back hectic now again. It's hectic. It's very hard to get jobs done now. Very, very hard because it's, it's I mean this place is just full of golfers. We get some mornings we get a bit of a break and we'd have two hours maybe in the morning to give us a bit of a chance, but yeah, it's it's filling up, filling up. Okay, you're happy to see people back. Oh yeah, like geez, it's, it's you know I mean, it's the bread and butter of it, like, you know, yeah. golfers. 
Well, Martin, I'll let you get back to your greens there because I know I pulled you off that ginormous lawnmower and you have a busy day ahead. A busy month ahead, a please, busy God. Month. That's a busy it. Month. That's a busy it. month.